Edwards, and I'm the host of Fender Play Live. And today, we're going to talk about a concept that is, uh, it goes across all genres of music. It's simple, and it's essential, and it's called dissonance. And this, this, uh, this applies to players of all levels, and not only does it add tension and musicality to your playing, but it also helps you create some spooky sounds, and that's why we're talking about it this Halloween week. And helping me with uh, today's discussion is the, uh, the mad scientist of scales himself, the curious, strange, bizarre figure known as Dr. Dylan Calajuri. <laughs> Dr. Dylan! Ha ha! Yes! Wow, I don't know if I could top that I intro, though. The, the, the fright wig and the beakers with the dry ice and everything? We talked you, about this, Dylan. You know, my producer shot down a lot of my ideas. A lot of them. So, yeah, I've been formally... Well, you know, yeah. yeah, you know, saying no has never come back to bite him, so I, I don't blame him. <laughs> All right, well... Not with me. Uh, listen, <laughs> now, uh, what, what are you playing gear-wise today? Oh, so I've got, uh, this is an Ampro 2 uh, Dark Knight with Humbucker Single Single because we're going to be doing a little bit of spooky things today, right? So... So this is a machine of mischief. There's nothing else to be said. All right. I love how you do that without any guitar poses. It's oh, sorry. Cool. Give me it's another like shot. It's like if played lead guitar. <laughs> um, so, and then I, uh, and by the way, what's the color of that? Is that, what's that called? It's some, what's the blue? Dark Knight. Is it? Dark Knight. Dark Knight. No, Dark blue. Dark no, well, blue. Good. Come on. The blue. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks great with your Halloween shirt there, buddy. Thank uh, you, sir. And I Thank have you. the player jazz master here. Oh, and, uh, yes. I'm, uh... Ooh, that, that is, Crunchy, eh? that's... Wow. So I too am using humbuckers because uh, probably it's going to be appropriate for most of the sounds that we're making today. Now, if uh, any of you out there have a question about today's topic, um, drop them in the comments and we'll try and get to them. And everything you hear today uh, is, is on the site. We're playing a lot of songs, mostly from the Halloween collection, which I'm sure Dylan will tell you about a little later. Um, but, uh, but if you're looking at any of the helpful tips that Dylan has about any lessons on there, uh, look for the links in the description below. Now let's get to it. Uh, let's start with hearing some spooky uh, evil tones in action, if you will. Dylan, um, play, play something for us, please. All right, let's do it. You guys ready? <laughs> Sorry, sorry. So, no, look, I, can't, I can't see the comment sections when we do this show, but I'm imagining someone's typing, go, Dylan, go. If there's goat, 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 goats are up. Oh, goat, Dylan, is, yeah. goat. I got you. So what was goats. it? Goats. No, 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 so no, this is Avenged song? Sevenfield. So uh, Avenged Sevenfield, have you guys heard the song Doing Time before by Avenged Sevenfield? I think we just did. Uh, you have now. That's right. And it's an excellent example of the topic today, which is dissidents. So we're yeah, talking about how... Is this, oh, wait, what is did I say? Sevenfold? Sevenfield? Well, now, Sevenfield was my recommendation. We need to morph the blooper. No, it's, we need to morph the blooper reel. I'm glad you did it. There's a gas leak in this room. I don't know. I can't be held <laughs> responsible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, but it, so why? Okay, but tell me about that song and why wouldn't I, why is it not likely I'm going to hear it played at, at, like at the first dance at a wedding? Yeah, it's not a merry-go-round song, uh, uh, Eugene. Uh, this is a song, it's, it's filled, it's filled with dissonance. Right. And what is dissonance? And, and, dissonance is basically yeah. 
it's basically the the idea of instability within tone. So if you guys have ever been tuning up your guitar and you hear sort of the in-between, the in-betwixt sound. So here's the two notes that are matching, right? right? Okay, everything's working well now. If they're not... Right? Okay, wow, wait a minute. My dog, everybody's upset. So th the concept wait, here is painful. that... It is. It is painful. So if you're thinking of uh, like, you know, when a baby cries on a, uh, an airplane or uh, when your refrigerator shuts and it squeaks every time, things that kind of get to you, they say something's not right. It's, it's, it almost feels like the, like there's a vibration uh, that happens that occurs like a rub. It's like it's like a like a, a like an abrasive rub of sound, right? Uh, yeah. I imagine we use dissonance when we design car horns and alarms because it, it's a harsh sound to get our attention. We use dissonance yep. for that sort of thing. Now, um, and I think film composers use this a lot for effect, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, and and but but we can create these sounds not by just kind of you know not tuning our guitars properly. We can do this on purpose and create uh, dissonance and create a tension or a spookiness by using different notes of our scale. So Dylan, I think you've got a really, really snazzy uh, little demonstration for us on how to do that. Yeah, so uh, this is this is for all you visual learners out there and we have to thank our mm -hmm. our, our fantastic producers for this idea. So um, I, I, want to, I want you guys to envision a beautiful forest, okay? A beautiful forest, right? And okay. I, I'm envision closing, I'm in your mind's... A can, lovely can you see it? forest with like a, uh, in my in my brain, yeah, I can see it, and I can see sunlight streaming in, and tall trees and and leaves, and um, I can, and it's just it's just uh, very very peaceful. Okay, so now something goes terribly wrong in that enchanted uh -oh. forest, right? Something bad. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go in there. You're already in, Eugene. Do I have cell service out here? You will not call anyone. No one can help you. Okay. So this gives you a great idea, what the visual do? aspect what did you? What did you do to my forest? Right, right. What just happened there? So we're... Mm -hmm. When we're talking about dissonance in music, uh, the visual idea is supposed to help you hear through your mind's eye, if you will, uh, the, the particular intervals or the particular shapes that are being adjusted to create a sound of tension. And in this case, I played a D and then I lowered a very crucial tone in that D chord, which is the fifth, to create something called a high tone or a flat five. So I have a regular D. And anybody that knows the D chord, so if you're, if you're in uh, level one or level two, this is something that you could do and instantly create a tension and release between those two things. Gotcha. So now in this case, or if you know your major scale, if you count up to the fifth note of your scale, in the case of one, two, three, four, five, and you just lower that by one fret and you'll get that. As your forest will, this, yeah. You get that. That's right. And so we hear this in a lot of music. Um, the flat five creates what's called a tritone. It's this very disturbing sound. And uh, you can, and they're all over the neck, honestly. If you find the root note and just flatten your five, you can get, for instance, or you can get. So we hear, so flat five can be used in a lot of different ways, and you use it in a very spooky way. Um, so, so that's the tritone, and it's, again, if you know your simple, uh, just a, a few uh, parts of your major scale, you can just start messing with it one note and get a lot of tension and, and darkness and spookiness. Now we have uh, a question, oh, from a uh, Kubrick lover, 1972, I recognize this ah, name, asking, yes. would drop D tuning be considered dissonant? Well. You know, it definitely lends itself to a lot of uh, dissonant shapes. So it's really easy. One of the reasons drop D tuning works really well is because you can just make that single that single bar create a chord, right? And so within that chord, you can add a lot of. So all I'm doing is I'm adding on the fifth string. I'm at the third fret. So it, it, it's it's and it's also associated with a lot of different styles of music that constantly invoke dissonance, if you will. 
heavier yeah. music uses those drop tunes. Yeah, it, it's, it seems so. It's not the reason. Right. It, it doesn't actually create dissonance, but it makes it easier to reach dissonance. Also, Basant Misra says there are seven fields on the other side of that forest, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> well played well played. wow okay, wow now that we know what dissonance is let's uh oh by the way if you can drop in your speaking of uh dropping stuff in the comments uh in the comments i can drop your favorite song or riff that has some great dissonance maybe bonus points for halloween theme music maybe or you know just or what's the creepiest melody or riff or tune that you can think of let's get a let's get a discussion going and we'll uh we'll give you some shout outs now the best way to learn about anything in music is really still to hear it dylan can you give us another example uh, that's from the fender the fender play site please absolutely absolutely so check this one out i think you guys will dig it so <laughs> So uh, that's, uh, if you guys haven't heard, Push It by Static X, which takes me right back into junior high right there. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's Static X, Push It. Not to be confused with the salt and pepper, Push It, which right, is which also we, on the site. We also have it on the site. Uh, yes. Now, let me ask you, what is the dissonant note in that riff? What, what's making that thing work that way? Yeah, so when you guys are listening for dissonance, it's always in juxtaposition, right? So it's always when two things are being compared to each other that creates that sort of instability. And so if we just hear this one chord by itself, it just sounds slightly menacing, giving the distortion and everything. If we just hear this one octave, it just sounds like an octave, but compared to each other. And what that is, is this is the interval of a flat second or a minor second. And whenever you take an interval past the octave, you basically add plus seven. So we have what would be flat nine. And, and so, so that's quick, it. That's the big trick to that. Count up to flat nine, starting from the root. Slowly play it as a scale so our, our viewers can see how, how you reach flat nine. Can you do that for us? Sure. Sure thing. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm starting on D, I've got D, E, F, G, A, C sharp, D. And then normally it would go to E again, but it goes to E flat. And that's going to create that, nice. that flat two or flat nine right there. Now, we were discussing this earlier, and you said there's a really easy, spooky movie theme that people can create on their, on their guitar at home, like a great bigger, right? And, it, and it, does it involve this, this flat nine idea or this flat two thing? Absolutely. So it involves a rather large amphibious animal. Uh, and and the, the real key with this is to build both in intensity and in rhythmic speed. So thinking of adding dissonance with adding intensity at the same time. So if I've got this. And then, you know, everything goes insane. Somebody's, oh, I don't remember the, somebody's arm the comes off. Bar being in the, in yeah, the that may have been. Sort of, <laughs> That's Jaws, the Kubrick but, version. It's okay, a Kubrick. So in yeah. Fact, yeah, you know, The Who had a song called Boris the Spider, which, boy, I'd be cool to get that on Halloween. <laughs> but they do this, this creepy, crawly, creepy, crawly, creepy, creepy, crawly, crawly. They do that same thing like, 10 years before the Jaws theme. So, and they use that same skill. Now, we've got some great comments about dissonance. Some, Michael Burrell says the string screech from Psycho. Well, that's a classic. Oh. That's a great, great. Bernard. You Kirby can do that on guitar too. <laughs> you can get it, Michael. I swear. It's it's definitely possible. Just grab any the third string uh, and second string. Go four frets apart. Go up real high if you want. Yeah, and that's going to give you that kind of nasty sound there. Yeah. Maddie Bo says, don't fear the Reaper, the solo. Well, we started the episode with that. That's on the site. I believe that's in the, yeah. the Halloween uh, uh, section. And that, that I love the way that thing starts with the F minor triad to a G7 triad. So we start, I think, right here. And really, that's where the dissonance happens. You have F natural on 10th fret G and B natural, that's the flat five, on 7th mm -hmm. fret high E string. 
That's a tritone. So they set up that creepy nature there, and then the drums and everything kicks in, and you go, um, all that sort of fun stuff happens there. Also, S.D. Rockman says, Halloween theme. Now, that, oh, that yeah. has a sharp six, I believe, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So instead of making the five, the, the, the five of your, uh, uh, yeah, the, instead of making the five a flat note, you actually make it a sharp one and you get that kind of creepiness. Uh, also, uh, from a guy who goes by the, the, the name Audible Headache, Black Hole Sun. Do you got that one, Dylan? You know what? Uh, I, I, no. I can't remember that offhand. I was going to say on the, uh, the sixth you note. We were talking about this with the producer because that's so it does the same thing that the Halloween theme those, does, right? It, it goes to that, are, that yeah, minor six. That's that's cool. And, and, and of course, uh, uh, Crazy Train's on the side as well. And, and Dean Hunter says, my practice sessions are basically dissonant. Oh, hang, hey, man, so are mine. Hang in there, Dean. Thank you for your honesty, buddy. My taxes uh, were dissident, have, so, you know, I, I completely understand. <laughs> well, like, so a lot of these examples so far, your examples have been from, from heavy metal or, or industrial metal uh, artists. So we do hear it a lot there, but we also hear it in a lot of other genres, including, like, just the blues. And here's one from our Halloween collection. Um, let's see. There's an old Screaming Jay Hawkins song. So we have the, the Kingfish versions of this. Screaming Jay Hawkins, uh, I put a spell on you. You're going now, hear the dissonance on the five chord because it's a dominant chord in a minor key. So it's, I put a spell on you. Yeah. Of course, we're in a minor key, which is already a little dark. But when it goes to the five chord, why is there a dissonance there, Dylan? Explain to me. Yeah. So, so you've got the, the C sharp minor, the key you're playing in C sharp minor, going to F sharp minor, right? And normally in the key of C sharp minor, the five, which would be G, C, D, E, F, G, right? So C, D, E, F, G. Or G so we have C sharp minor, four chord, F sharp minor. Now when we get to... G sharp, what happens is, is that we've raised one tone. We've made uh, this this B, basically a B sharp, which is, mm -hmm. which is, should blow your mind right there, but it's actually, you know, same thing as C, and that is an inharmonic tone. That tone denotes what's called the Phrygian dominant scale or the Phrygian scale. You can check that out on the site too. Um, and I think that's something that you'll really dig as far as like understanding how a, a dominant chord within a minor key puts you in a major spot for dissonance, major spot. Right. And we'll talk about a particular scale. In fact, almost exactly a year ago, we did an episode on a particular scale that, that highlights that tension and that, that darkness. Right. Also, whenever you're playing a seventh chord, so in this case, that was a G sharp seven chord, but you play any seventh chord. Here's, I'll play an E seven in that, in a C seven shape here, if you're, if you're a caged person. That right there. Um, then every seven chord like that has a tritone in it inherently. And in this case, on my D and G string, there's a tritone. So yeah. even for beginners, when you're learning your, your basic uh, progressions, if you're learning, uh, you know, G, C, and D7, you're hearing a tritone is there inherently. So that's what I say. Even for beginners, you're going to come across tritones, and it's really nice to listen for them. For, and in this case, that tension is not so spooky, but it is a tension that's eventually resolved when you go to the one chord. Yeah, absolutely. And, anyways. Right. So um, here's another example from the site, uh, uh, a song, uh, the Atlantic Rhythm Section's Spooky. This is on the Halloween collection. And I'm going to run through. So this is also in a minor key, but it has a couple of tricky chords in there that definitely have attention to them. Um, Thank you. 
Man, so that's such a great song like too. Actually, three chords that have a, a dissonance or tritones in them. My A thirteen chord, if you will. Oh, these chords with all these numbers. Yeah. But there's your tritone right in there, and then mm-hmm. so tritone there, and then I played a, a B flat diminish. Diminished chord, I think you'll talk about a little later. It's a bunch of minor third intervals repeated. So that's a very, a lot of tension in that chord. And then towards the end, we have a sharp nine chord, which is sometimes called the Hendrix chord. <laughs> so spooky, if you go to the site and learn that, you'll inherently find some, well, some spooky tones and some dissonance. Um, go for it, Dylan. What you got up? Yeah, well, that's such a great song. And, and it's, it's uh, if you guys haven't heard it before, that, that whole pattern... And sorry if my guitar was uh, too loud just a minute ago. Uh, hopefully you fixed it. But basically the concept is this chord normally in, in E minor is also a minor chord. Not only they have, have they made it major, but they added uh, really what, what sounds mostly like a D major 7 with, with an A over the top. So they're, they're just they're breaking all the rules. They're defying all of our expectations, right? They're being downright spooky. That's what they're doing. And so uh, not only that, when they get to what would be a five chord, they do one of the, the spookiest things in music, which is what's called a diminished uh, chord. And... Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. Hold on. That, that's, there was never... Okay. No, no. But this, defend, this is an important to, thing. Not, yes, I can't defend your gratuitous playing, but... Um, but... <laughs> In, but in the old silent films, right, Simon Legree would, would uh, yeah. tie the damsel and just to the train tracks. And as we see the train coming, the piano player would play some sort of diminished thing, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is just, it, it, I mean, it was uh, hitting human emotion even before we had, uh, you know, sound and picture and all that sort of stuff. Just to, That's just right. To they, had to, they had to show you things were tense. And so they did it through music with diminished chords. And we're looking forward to an episode coming up on diminished chords. So you guys hang tuned for that. There's a lot I'm of stuff on the site, the though. I'm looking forward to doing an episode on silent films because my producer is going to be thrilled with the uh, <laughs> modern reference. <laughs> we'll be uh, innovators. <laughs> innovators. So John Smith in the Facebook community is saying, so is that akin to blue notes? Dylan, yeah, I, Dylan, that, that's a great point, yes. John. Dylan, take it. Yeah, no, it, it's actually the same thing. So a blue note is referring to what's, if I'm in the key of A, this, this flat five, right? So that would be the, the note E flat. And uh, what's happening is, is that we're, we're playing basically a chord that's built almost entirely off of that note. So what we end up with a really hip sound. We end up with a really hip sound that's all blue, and that's the thing. So, uh, diminished chords are amazing because they have four names, and they can be built in four places from each one of their positions. So, so that's why they move up in minor thirds. And if you're a new player, one really fun thing to do is just to practice going up in minor thirds or in four fret stretches. That's a pretty kind of groovy sound if you do it on two strings. It's a pretty spooky thing. Your cat might might That's go a in a circle over that. Easy thing to remember yeah. too. That's a good one. Uh, Share P says plucking the low E string as you tune to drop D is a super creepy sound that reminds her <laughs> that there's something horrifying going to happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, like the sound in the series, The Handmaid's Tale. I also oh, think boy. about um, Iron Man actually by Black Sabbath that starts. With yeah, well. Damn. So that's a great example. Uh, and, and Darren M is asking, is I want you, she's so heavy, an example of dissonance. That's the Beatles song that closes outside mm. one of Abbey Road. Yes, there is a moment. Uh, there is. It's that, that little section is in D minor. You hear, you hear an A7 chord with a sharp five in it. So it has a flat, or has a, a flat two in it as well. So, yes, they actually get a creepiness, and they repeat it over and over and over again for effect. So that's a really, really good example. Now, Daniel Bobke wants to know what about whammy bar effects, Dylan? This is your this is your purview here. A trem bar. Oh dive wow! Followed by a pull backup can be creepy. Can you make a, a creepy sound with the guitar? Like, no, like it's a Daniel complete Ichabod Crane situation with the whammy bar. So, so 
If we take just the regular whammy bar and just do some mild... Already this sounds a little out of this world, right? Now if we do some... Some more type of dive bomb that's on the site, by the way, if you look up dive bomb. And if we move to the start... We got some banshee cries. You know, we did an episode on whammy bars. There's also an entire course on Fender Play about whammy bar play as well. So that's that's something really cool to check out if you want to get spooky. Banshee cries, very very Halloween, uh, very very Halloween, very, very guitar and very Halloween. Now we've shown some examples. Now let's we'll try and use them in solos or in songwriting. Now of course you can always put these uh, certain tones in your melody, like the the Rolling Stones did, and, and paint it black. Um, and we're in this. They use a particular scale that we we spoke about a, a year ago. So we'll talk about that again because it's definitely a haunting sound. In that case, they're in E minor, and we get this. on from there but let's just talk about that main melody of the song it's an e minor and then of course we have a melody that has this b7 chord and has the major note it's kind of like i put a spell on you right where mm. instead of it being a, the five chord being a minor chord it's going to be a major chord so we have this so we have it's all minor scale there but then we go down i think hmm What scale is that, Dylan? Uh, that the would be minor? the harmonic minor scale. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's really. So, so tell me, tell me why that is a spooky uh, element or quality. In so. Because it has basically a major seventh in it, and it's a minor scale. So normally the the E minor scale would sound like this. Disgruntled, mm. disgruntled, but not quite it's evil, <laughs> right? And, and so here, now here's the harmonic minor scale. And it allows for four. I mean, this is the shredder scale right here. There's no end to it. No end. And I'm assuming I can learn this harmonic minor scale on the site. Oh, golly, can you? We actually have a veritable smorgasbord of harmonic minor material on the site. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a great, great, great place to start. If you can learn that scale, drop it into your solos or write a song using that harmonic minor scale. A lot Man, of that'd be really cool. Used it. That'd be awesome. That'd be really yeah. great. Now, um, one, uh, actually a couple of last questions from Michael S. Do sus chords create dissonance? So sus chords generally, in, the two types of sus chords are going to be sus four and sus two, right? So sus four is like your... Sorry, I'm so distorted. We have D, and then basically what happens is we get rid of the third, and we make it a fourth, right? Now, the other version would be play D, and we get rid of the third and play a second. So what sus chords kind of do is they actually take sort of, they make a chord sort of androgynous. It's like it no longer has the determinant which makes it major or minor. They've substituted the third with a fourth or a second, and by doing so, they've taken away the chord quality and just made it this sort of like the pile of notes. Very, very open, unresolved thing, yeah. but not necessarily spooky or, or, or dissonant. Right. In the application, I mean, when you expect something to, to sound major, expect something to sound minor and you go to sus chord, it can sound uh, that unresolving thing can be kind of unnerving in a way and create its own mm -hmm. tension. Yeah. Right. One last question from Neil Garcia. Dylan, is a tritone the same as a triad? No, and that's a great question. So basically, the, the term tritone originates uh, from the fact that it's three whole tones that are combined to create a tritone. So if I start on A, a whole tone away is a whole tone away from that is C sharp, and a whole tone away from that is D sharp. And that makes the tritone. So that's where the that term was, comes from. That was almost a Rush song, right? 
It was, it was also almost the Simpsons too. So, you know, it's, a, it's, oh. it's, you know, it's the most Good utilized point. tension tool in music probably. So it's definitely a cool thing. Right. Y, Y, Z. That's a, that's got a flat five there. Doing it. Okay. So Dylan, can you take us out with one more example from the Halloween collection before we start assigning homework? Absolutely. Yeah. So here, I'll give you guys a, this to here. That's it. There it is. Ugh. White zombie. It, White, it's got White zombie. zombie. The artist has zombie in his name. It says Thunder Kiss 65. That is on the uh, on the site. So make sure you grab that riff. That's, that was a lot of fun. It also has that sharp nine chord in there. It's got the, the It's kind of got all of them. Of e minor. It's got it, Yeah, it, it has really like have all of them. That's a great it's way. Like to, yeah, go learn that <laughs> go learn that song and and then and look for those that dissonance in there and I guarantee you'll have fun. Okay, now for the homework. For the beginner we want you to play, uh, well, Dylan came up with this one, uh, play Jaws on all strings as an exercise. Right, Dylan, right? How do yes, you do that? Yes, but demonstrate the homework, you've please. got to bring the energy on this. Now, because it sounds like it's easy, right? So we've got, sorry, let me turn off this uh, this delay that's on here. So I'm just going from zero to one on the sixth string, right? And if you're working in the in the, in the the course right now and you're working on warm up on one string, two strings, et cetera, depending on what level you're on, this is something that's not totally foreign to you. Right, so you've got to build, you've got to bring it. So practicing being able to build that intensity to really make the shark come out of the water and destroy everyone that lives on the boat, that's the thing you've got to you do. What, just try and scare your neighbors with it, just as a simple yes. gauge. You know? At least your dog. Okay, now at the, least the dog. <laughs> or at least your dog. Uh, for the intermediate, learn the bridge to "Don't Fear the Reaper." It's got that tritone again. We showed that. That uh, starts here. Nice finger exercise gets you up the neck there, and um, and that's just kind of helped you demonstrate how you can create a, tr a tritone, not by playing a full chord at once, but in terms of a little bit of a scale. And then for the advance, we want you to write a spooky riff using any of the tricks that we've shown you today, okay? And and post it with the hash. What should the hashtag be, Dylan? I'd say hashtag uh, spooky riffs uh, in on the go. site, and. and you really don't have to go crazy here. It doesn't have to be something that's like uh, super insanely hard to play necessary. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, oh, oh. add homework so we can find so we can find it too. So hashtag homework. Hashtag, hashtag spooky riffs. Uh, Thanks, but you could literally. Perry. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank you, Perry. Yeah, Perry keeps us in line. You could literally just yes. take a string. <laughs> Just doing some minor work to kind of find like what kind of jiggles your spine a little bit makes you go, eh, something's wrong. Then you know you've got it. That was it. Well, well put. All right, talk about spine jiggling. Let's get to the fender plays. <laughs> what, are you going to start giving stuff away or what? <laughs> yes, this yes. And now. This is, now there really is tension. Everyone's spine. Yes. So, hey, hey, if you guys are watching for the first time, we actually give away gear every week on this show and the only thing you have to do to be automatically entered to, to win some gear at the end of the show is just use fender play for a minimum of 21 minutes so three seven minute sessions equals three streaks and you are automatically entered to win that's it and then i might get to call your name at the end of the episode and you get to pick from guitars there's amps there's basses there's uh, all kinds of different gear that you can choose from right and hopefully hopefully you'll post on our uh, Fender Play Facebook page, and we'll get to uh, show your picture and talk about it later on, what you pick. But do you guys want to hear who won this week? We're all waiting. We're all waiting. Are you ready for this? This is going to be a pretty spooky intro. <laughs> John D. Not John Dreyer. We know it's not him. 
That's right. No, it's not, it's not our <laughs> beloved John Dreyer. He's not allowed to win. John D., congratulations <laughs> on your on your prize. Have fun with your, your bass, guitar, amp, ukulele, whatever it is you grab, have fun with it, and congratulations. Dylan, what's new on the site, buddy? Yeah, so uh, there's something that uh, everyone needs to take a look at, right? Because this is really important. Celebrate the season, the Halloween collection. It's fun for all family, right? So you can really call everybody out, sit around the campfire, and play that little ditty that you might know, like Crazy Train. So that's that's the good one, right? All the neighbors come around. How about Cowboys from Hell? So we've got a... So these are things that you get the family together and you celebrate the season in style. No one goes from zero to 100 and back to zero like you, Dylan. It's kind of spooky. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's a spooky. clinical thing. It really is a, a condition. You're a coiled spring, I tell you. Well, thank you so much for helping us. Thank you for helping us uh, embrace dissonance and, and adding tension to our, our guitar playing. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Hope you guys got a lot out of that. Thank you for your great comments. Uh, and yeah. uh, I, until next week, I want everyone to keep safe, keep practicing. And we'll see you next week. It'll be a little less spooky. Now, everybody, let's play it on a G chord. Throw a flat five if you want in there. Or flat hit five. a capital G uh, key on your keyboard on the oh, count yeah. of four. And we'll see you. One, two, three, four. <laughs>